Damascus encounters are wonderful moments, beautiful stories, turnaround experiences for the children of God when they come in contact with Jesus. Some, a beautiful and instantaneous turn. For others, a step-by-step -step walking with Jesus and experiencing Him on a daily basis. On the Damascus encounter today, I have a beautiful story that we shall be walking through as we welcome Elder Daniel Kende. Thank Elder you very Kende, much. welcome to the Damascus encounter. Thank you very much. Now, let's talk about your experience. You have this experience where you've had to walk with God step by step. First, let's look at how you came into the Seventh-day Adventist Church. You got baptized in the year 1984. Can you share with us that experience that you had and how you came to be baptized? Thank you very much. Um, I'm a native of Elisha, okay. Elisha Remo in Ogbo State. And uh, knowing that the uh, Adventist Seminary of West Africa is located there, right there. Yeah, in Elisha. In Elisha. So we have many friends okay. that are used to come to us, invite us from Elisha to the church. Mm. So they, they know my family very well. At that time, I was still uh, very young. So we used to worship at times on Saturday with our, with our friends. Come with your friends to church? Yes. Okay. So on that fateful day, that was 1984, uh, I cannot remember precisely the day. So after the week of pray, week of uh, spiritual emphasis, I was one of those who baptized on that day by Pastor Kuma. Pastor Kuma happened to be the university pastor then. He he was he, he was a Ghanaian. So that was my first time that I was baptized into Seventh-day Adventist Church with some of my colleagues. I still remember them till now, and some of them we are still together. Some are now pastors. Okay. So, and since that time, there has been a series of uh, experience. That you've the, had as you... Yes, in the, in, in the, in the, in the Lord. Church. Yes. So, let's talk about some of these experiences that you've had. Um, in the year 1987, you had this experience that one of your major experiences, what you consider your Damascus encounter. Yes. 1987, what happened? You had this battle with your with sickness, mm -hmm. and then you experienced something that yes. God did. What yeah. was that yeah. about? That 1987 was when I gained admission into Ogun State University. Okay. So, remember, I've been baptized in 1984. 1984, yeah. So, already the knowledge of Christ, I already have the knowledge of Christ. Mm. But then, something special happened in 1987. So, there was a particular ailment that I had then. It was a stomach, stomach problem. This tumor problem happen, it, it, it appears and go. It appears and go. At times it can affect me for some weeks and then it will disappear. And then each time it came, it used to be terrible because I would, I would not be able to do anything. So during my first semester in university, that was Augustine University then, I happened to attend a Christian fellowship. Okay. In that Christian fellowship, the preacher was emphasizing that Christ can do everything for you. Christ will do anything for you. Just ask by faith. Just pray. He will do it. And uh, knowing the problem I had, I pray by faith. And as I pray by faith, when the service closed, I went back to my hostel. The local medicine that had been given 
I destroy all of them. I threw them away, believing that that faith that I have in Christ, who can do everything in one's life, is enough to heal. So, to my surprise, up to today, that stomach problem becomes, has become an history. And it just disappeared like that? Yes, it disappeared. And uh, the reason why it was uh, a Damascus experience to me is that it is a problem that has been lingering since the time I was in secondary school. And uh, to, the, that, to the end that I will be giving several uh, concussion, several uh, medicine, local medicine, this one to lick, this one to swallow, this one to drink. But then, uh, for the fact that after I believed and then threw away those concussions, believing in Christ, and that after that I did not have anything, stomach problem again, it is really a miracle. And it made me to know that truly there was, I mean, there is nothing that is too big for Christ to do. So in the past, you would take those medications and somehow you still get to experience the stomach problem. Yes. But this time around, Disappear. you declared in the name of Jesus. Yes. You believed and that, med that problem was gone. Yes. Yes. At some point, you talked about your mom being so worried for you. You had to go home, go to school, yeah. you're far from home, yeah. from your medication. Yes. But when you took this step of faith yes. and you decided, Jesus, you can heal me. Yes. And you destroyed those medications. Did you tell your parents about it? Did no, you tell I did not. I did not because, you know, my mother was there at Elisha and I was at uh, Agorwe. So I took the decision at, uh, you know, a place uh, in her absence. And uh, that same night that uh, I listened to the message and I developed faith, it was that same night I destroyed it. And uh, even though later she had, but that has been a long time ago when I, I mean, after I've been recovered. Mm. So, and every time I come back home, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, you know. You I don't have any I, battle with the stomach. Exactly. Nobody uh, had reasons to ask uh, questions. Exactly. And I don't succumb to using uh, any, of, any, any of those local uh, medicine any again. Medicine. Interesting. So, mm. Your story is very unique in the sense that it's like God took you one step after the other, one experience led to another. Yes. Can you share with us some of those experiences? At some point you had this cold and you had a flu, cold catar mm. and yeah. everything. Yeah. Somebody prayed for you mm. and what happened? Yes. Um, I mentioned that of uh, healing okay. uh, in that 1987 because that was like the first experience I had about God healing somebody instantly. But I've had several others after that, making me to know more and then to be drawing closer and closer to God. There was this time in the campus where we were visited by a coordinator a Christian coordinator. He visited our hostel. As of that time, I was having a flu, running nose with Qatar. So after the devotion, because he slept with us that day, after the devotion, when he was about to run up, he now said, I pray in the name of Jesus, the Qatar that is warning this brother, let it dry. To my surprise, it was as if something touched my nose and then uh, it disappeared instantly, you know. it and was you were just healed like that? Yeah, exactly. It was an instant healing. Imagine somebody, uh, you know, coughing intermittently mm. and then suddenly it's like something tapped you and then it disappeared, then the runny nose disappeared, dried. So it's not... It's not a miracle that, uh, it's not a them say. It's something you experienced. Yeah, it's something that I experienced. It gave you that 
eye-opening exactly. um, experience that yes. Jesus has it's, done it's, this again. Yes, and it's alive. So, Amen. yes. Amen. Okay, let's look at some of all the experiences that you've had. You seem to have quite a number of them. Yes. One significant one was the time or moment when you actually experienced the Holy Spirit. Yes. Taking hold of you and you had that experience that you considered very significant. What happened? Yes. Um, I'm the type that uh, in those days when I, I would go for midweek or prayer session, I don't, I'm not usually, in, I wasn't usually in hurry to leave. After the message and general prayer, I would stay behind and then I would pray, 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 pray until I'm satisfied. So, this experience happened at Ikene. That's a town near Elysium here. Okay. So, as I was praying, it was getting to around 7. People have, uh, the service has ended around 6.30, people have, have left. So, as I was praying, I just discovered that a mighty wind was coming. It came in, and then it came to where I was kneeling, and then it was moving around. Then the moving around was becoming very high at higher at a very high frequency. Very, very high. The 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 the, the, the movement mm. is incomparable. There is no dynamo that I mean that I can compare to that uh, movement. So as it moved with you know with higher frequency, I discovered that it was as if my, you know, my, I was your, lifted up. Your being. Yes, I was lifted up in the middle of that wind. And then with a very high frequency, very high frequency. So it persisted, 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 persisted. I don't know whether it was up to an hour that it happened like that. All along I was praying. The prayer was no more in an ordinary tongue anymore. So eventually, when the uh, prayer ceased, then it's as, as if I was placed back on my knee. Then I now stood up. I, I went back home. What, what, what exactly did that experience teach you? What did you get from it? What, when you stood up after the experience, how did you feel? Okay. Now, the... I felt powerful immediately after that experience because one of the ways I felt powerful is that I can remember now on that particular day mm. as I stood up, uh, I decided to go and visit one of our members which I have not visited for a long time. So. One of the, 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 the son of that man that I went to visit, as he was approaching me, hatred from me, hatred of that person was on me. So you can imagine somebody who did not offend you and then you develop hatred for him. And somebody that I've just prayed, so, why is that so? Thank you very much. Immediately it happened like that. The Spirit of God told me that that person needs to be prayed for. That he has that spirit of hatred. People will hate, will be hating that person. And that, that spirit of hatred in that person has to be cast, has cast out. Dealt with. Yes. So eventually I pray for him. So what I discovered since after that experience that I developed, I discovered that some spiritual gifts were, were you know, showing were in, my, embedded in, you. Uh, in my life. And then you were able to pray with people. Uh, yes, and yes, yes. God answered those prayers. Yes. And another one is uh, the, the word of knowledge. God used to reveal to me some things that, you know, maybe people will not want to say. So some of those things, when God reveals, when God reveals those things to you, yes, and um, you feel 
that this is God revealing this to you? When you tell people, how do they accept it? Well, what I discover is that when God reveals some things to you, it's not, it reveals them to you, not for you to go and tell them. It, it, at times, it reveals to you in order to help you yourself. Okay. You know, maybe to deliver you from deceit or for you to pray for them. Okay. So, so, uh, so, but in a situation where God wants you to tell them and then uh, maybe to correct them, you also do. You also be led, yes. Let's um, share with us a little bit this experience that you have. Because sometimes I've found out as Christians, there are things that happen to us yes and we take them for granted i can have a very bad night maybe i didn't sleep well and i feel yes. tired in yeah. the morning yes maybe after a little breath of prayer yes suddenly i feel revitalized but many times we do not pay attention to this and this doesn't this is not the case with you yes you've managed to tie something to mm. about god to mm. the experiences you've had yes can you share a little bit about the day you went to church, coming back from farm, mm -hmm. burnt out completely, and how you got energized? <laughs> yeah. I remember I, I came back for holiday. I came back to Elysian for holiday, and then in those days I used to do manual job for people in order to earn some, some money. money. Mm -hmm. So I went to that farm to wheat and then I was, uh, it was a midweek, very, very tired. As of the time I would get to the town, it was around 5 p.m. And the, the midweek was to start by 5. The place where the church is located, I have to pass by that side to my home. So going home and coming back to the church would definitely be a late hour for me. So even though I was very tired with uh, dirty clothes, I decided I went in as much as uh, it's God that I'm going to worship. To worship. I, will, I will just branch there like that. So I branch at, at the church. As of, by the time I branch there, I've already started the service. So I sat down at the back, very, very tired. So I was almost uh, dozing. I discovered at the first time I was dozing. But what I discovered is that I just discovered that something tapped me here. It tapped my forehead. On your forehead. And within a very short time, it's as if it came out at the feet. So immediately it happened like that. I gained, you know, a mighty, you know, power within me. That's this mighty strength within me. As if I've eaten, I've slept, and I did not do any work. You were revitalized. So, so, yeah, I was revitalized. And I enjoyed the service very well with hope. And I prayed very well also on that day before I went, uh, I went home. So this made me to know that God is actually interested in every aspect of our life. And he knows our he knows our condition. He knows how we feel. Yes. What we are going through. Yes. You needed to get the message for the day. Yes. And he gave you the needed energy. Yes. To yes. Be able to concentrate. Mm -hmm. People talk about God talking to them. That is, you sit with people mm. and they share experiences of how they visibly had God speak. Yeah. Tell them this is what you should do. Yeah. You had your own experience of voice. Are you considered God telling you? Yeah. As you go to so so place today, make sure you do not stay back to swim. Mm. Do you want to share that experience? Yes. What you? Yeah, that's another wonderful experience. This happened in 1992 when I went to serve in Delta State. Mm. Um, we were three coppers at that time serving, but I was very intimate with one of them, uh, one Yin Kaolubodi, he was from Lagos, from Unilag. We were very close friend. So being from Unilag, he knew how to swim very well. 
but I didn't, know, I didn't know how to swim. And where we went to serve was River Nine area. That was Delta State. Mm. So we made an agreement that uh, they would be teaching me how to swim because we have a particular place in the, at the river bank of River Niger. Um, south in one village called Epide in uh, Delta State. Okay. So at the river bank, you know, he, he used to teach me how to swim. So every morning when we go to the river to, to bath, to clean, to clean up, to, uh, to wash our clothes, then we do a little training before we go to our work. On that day, that particular day when I woke up from sleep, <laughs> a voice came to me, said, today, just wash your clothes and then come back. Don't swim. Don't swim. <laughs> well, because I'm not used to hearing voice, I just felt that maybe it was just a ordinary voice. I went as usual after after washing clothes. I said, Inka, let's do some training. So normally we stay at a distance. Okay. Why? I will now be swimming to meet him. So on this day, as I was swimming, I never knew that I was swimming to the, the to the depth uh -huh, to the depth of the water of the river. Instead of swimming along the line of the river bank, but I discovered that by the time I should have gotten to him, I was not with him. And it is wor is worried because I was under under the waters of the river, so I could not be seen. It was when I discovered that uh, I supposed to have been with him and I wasn't that I now tried to stand up in the in the river. When I make effort to stand up, I discovered that my head was neither outside, my leg was neither down. I knew that there was problem. So I knew that I must have swept into the depth of the of the river. So you were scared. I was scared. So I now started struggling, 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 struggling. At a particular time, my head was now out and my hand. It was then that I discovered that I was really inside the Far river. Far away. Ah, and people were swimming in the river too, because those people they know how to swim a lot. It was then they started shouting, please so rescue the cop out. And then people came to rescue me. When they rescued me, <laughs> immediately they rescued me out. Mm. That same voice said, but I told you, you should not sweep today. So this added to my experience. It added to my experience that God, so God speak to someone and make someone to know his will. So and that you, you got to know what was coming. Exactly. And then when he speaks to you, you have to listen. That's it. And if we do a little bit of looking over time, because all this was your growing years in the faith. Yes. Today yes. you are a solid member of the Seventh day Adventist Church. You are an elder in the church. Yes. After you became Seventh day Adventist and becoming established in the church. Did you try to take the message to your family coming from that Anglican church background? Have you made such that? Yes, yes. The, presently, my mother is an Adventist. Hmm. And I thank God today also, my wife is an Adventist. Even though it, she too was not an Adventist, and my children. Then my, some of my brothers too are now members of the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, one thing I discover is that if you are a Christian, at the beginning, to those who are not uh, Christian or who don't have your belief, mm. they, they will think that uh, maybe you are lost or you are not, you are not on the right track. But when you 
are consistent, you will discover that they will see when they see the goodness of God. Some of them will join you. are attracted to the faith. Uh, but if you are not consistent, you are not, you yourself, you don't, you are not firm in what you believe, uh, they will not, they will not even join you. You will be attracted to. Yes, to your faith. Mm. The knowledge of what you know. Yes. Wonderful. Mm. Elder Daniel Kende, thank you very much for sharing your story. It's a wonderful experience having God talk to you, having God instruct you, and then having mm. those encounters with Jesus at different times of life. I want to believe that someone has been blessed as a result of your sharing today, and hopefully many more will also come to know Jesus as a result of your testimony. Amen. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you very Pray much. The Lord continues to bless you. Amen. That will be all on today's edition of the Damascus Encounter. You have had it. Maybe you also have had experiences and you didn't pay too much attention to those experiences today. We have seen that God can speak to us through experiences, through direct voice, and some encounters that he chose on his own on how to reach us. You can also look out for your Damascus encounter as you continue to keep your heart and mind in tune with the Holy Spirit, consistency, attracting many more to Jesus. Until next time, when we bring you another edition of the program, I want to say keep watching Hope Channel and of course, expect your Damascus encounter. Bye-bye.